What does a TH stand for? Came in hell. So the title of this video talks about building a foundation. And what I mean by that is think about what you want to be and how you're going to attain it. So let's start off with something simplistic. You want to be healthier. Okay, I'm no... I'm no physical therapist. I am not some kind of strength coach. I am no expert in the field. However, there are small improvements that eh, a lot of people can make, not everyone, but a lot, that will have immediate health benefits that generally, at least to me, to me in my opinion, I wouldn't really think about consulting anyone about it. It would it'd just be something that can be done and something that I wouldn't have to worry about change about affecting my health in any negative way. Of course, everyone's different, depends on your body, but let's say you want to be healthier. Think about it. You can, you, there are two ways to go about it. There's nutrition and then there's training. As Athlean X likes to put, uh, likes to say, and I'll link his channel in the description. And remember any, I, a lot of the general information I get about making self improvement, uh, I do get from Improvement Pill. He is a he's a pretty good YouTuber. I'll put his channel in the description as well. But you have nutrition, and then you have training. With nutrition, it's just a matter of changing the negative of your of your daily intake of food to the positive. So let's say you eat fast food once a, uh, once a day. That's seven times a week. Drop it to six times a week. Do that for a couple of weeks. And let's say you choose Wednesday. All right? Replace that with a healthy alternative. So let's say you go to lunch and you go eat fast food. You pick up fast food and bring it back to wherever you work. Pack yourself some fruits. Fruits are generally tasty. I mean, Let's say an apple and a banana um they're sweet you probably like them you just don't think to eat them all the time because they're they, i don't know maybe i i don't know I, I see them sometimes and i just don't eat them and i wonder why don't i eat them because i don't know but when you make a conscious effort this is your food okay well might as well eat it and make sure it's a satiating portion i mean you don't want to eat a tiny tiny amount of food and then still be thinking about fast food make it a, a satiating portion and you'll probably receive health benefits benefits for it i mean fruit definitely a healthy alternative to eating fast food do that for a couple of weeks and eventually it'll get easy you won't think about the fast food that you're missing on that one day and you'll probably see a small drop in, in weight at least you'll feel probably feel better probably Every person's different. But once you've gotten a couple of weeks where I'm no longer, you're no longer eating your uh, seven fast food meals a week, drop it down to, you're now eating six, drop it down to five. And don't do it two days in a row because then it, be, it comes with the stigma of being a streak. And it, it's, it's just difficult to maintain. Try to put a day in between and just try to make a routine of, Let's say you start off on Wednesday. That was the first day that you cut the fast food. And then the second day, let's say you make it Friday. So Monday, Tuesday, fast food, fast food. And then you have Wednesday. Pack yourself a satiating, healthy meal for lunch. Then Thursday, you go back to fast food. And then Friday, you do the same thing. Pack a healthy, satiating lunch. And then Saturday and Sunday is the same process. The thing is, your body, at least in my experience, doesn't like drastic change. So if you go cold turkey on fast food, suddenly you do not like it anymore. You, 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 don't, you don't like the idea of change. You want to go back. You want the greasy fast food and it's perish the you're, you're You're not going to want to change. The body doesn't like drastic change. At least mine doesn't. And, and if you think about it, and, and this is a poor example, but if you try to tear apart your muscles just to, air bone just you to go to a workout you lift weights that are too heavy you lift uh you, you strain yourself way too much you're more likely for an injury than you are for improvement and then on top of all of that 
the injury is not going to, even if you don't get hurt, but you're going to feel like shit the next day. And then you're probably not going to want to do it again. So that leads me into uh, training or exercise. If you, you want to get healthier, start off with walking. You're, if you leave a mostly sedent, lead a mostly sedentary lifestyle, you're probably not going to have the bone density to maintain a rigorous training uh, schedule. So start off with walking 10 minutes a day. Do it for two days, and then the third day, increase it by a minute. So 10, 10, 11. And just follow that pattern. Eventually, you'll get to the point where you're walking two miles, three miles, and you'll feel better. And then you can move on to improving the rest of your body but you'll probably have lost some weight and your endurance is probably a little bit better and you'll just feel better in general and you won't feel like shit every day because you're not tearing apart your body and expecting it to just repair you're doing some minor changes and it'll adjust accordingly but if, and this is all things considering that you live a life i mean Everyone has some kind of has some kind of life to lead. I mean, you either have a social life, you have work, whatever. But take into consideration other things. I mean, there are small improvements. So let's say it's not being healthier. You're already a fairly healthy person, but let's say your attention span or you don't uh, isn't great, or you don't read very much. But you want to change that. Start off with reading ten pages a day in one sitting. Sit down, read the ten pages. And then do the same exact thing. 10 pages, 10 pages. And then the third day, 11. 11, 12. 12, 13, 13, 13. You constantly increase a little bit and you'll start to realize, hey, this is, this is getting easier. And of course, everyone's different and you may have to make some kind of level, some level of adjustment so it's just, it fits you better. But the body doesn't like at least in my experience, the body doesn't like drastic change. So don't give it drastic change. Don't give it a reason to stop. Do small changes, things that it won't reject so easily. Uh, you're in a, if you sleep at 12 every day, but you want to, and you don't get the amount of sleep you need. And for those of you who say, I love sleep, so I've never, okay, whatever. I don't love sleep. I need it. I know I need it. I don't love it, though. I mean, I don't remember a lot of my dreams. So... I, I don't see the point to just spending all day in bed. <sighs> but you, you let's say you sleep at midnight every night. Don't try and you want to drag it back a couple hours. Don't sleep at 10 all of a sudden. Drag it back to 11.30, then 11, then 10.30, then 10. You'll see an improvement. You'll probably feel better. And you're just getting more sleep. And another thing, if you have a very active mind, uh, like I do, uh, try meditation. I mean, it sounds like a lot of hocus pocus, and I'm not going to advocate for all the mystical stuff that it has or side effects it has. Um, I never experienced those, and I don't meditate. Granted, I don't meditate every single day, but what it does do, and I, and at least I have seen, and uh, Improvement Pill talks about this, is that it trains your brain to learn to clear itself. So you do the whole meditation pose and then you try to focus on your breathing. Uh, Improvement Pill talks about how if you pay attention to where the inhale suddenly turns into an exhale, it kind of brings you back. And when I'm having trouble sleeping, I've had an active day and I've been thinking a lot and I just can't quiet my mind. I try to do that and at least for me, it works. So if nothing else, it may help you sleep. Make small improvements. You want to get better, then work to get better. It's a matter of, uh, you You can be told what to do you, all you want. But it's a matter of, are you willing to put in the effort? Are you? Because, remember, we live in our, we all live in our own personal hells. And you can either take it as a ninth ring of hell where it's a frozen wasteland and no one wants to be there. Or, or, you can make it the first level of hell. Limbo. Where everything's pretty decent and you can live a good life there. I mean, this is not a matter of religion. This is just based off of uh, Dante's The Inferno. All right, that's the analogy. That's where it comes from. But you can live a, a decent life. It's just up to you whether or not are you willing to tame your own hell. 
Thanks for watching.